Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbia Online, a church striving to embody courageous love, radical welcome, and deep connection. Now, more than ever, it is important for us to gather and remember that our church is not a building, but a beloved community of all of us together. I'm the Reverend Molly Hausch Gordon, the minister of this congregation, and I am so glad to welcome you to our community. Although we miss gathering all in person and on Sundays, the online services have given us the opportunity to connect with people we might not have otherwise met. And so we welcome in particular members of the Jefferson City Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, members, uh, visitors from all across Missouri and indeed all across the country. Thank you for joining us. A few comments about protocol for today's online worship. We are in Zoom and streaming, streaming live on Facebook. For those of you logged in on Zoom, we're in webinar mode, so we can't hear or see you. Feel free to eat your breakfast in your PJs, and don't worry if your dog is barking or your children are noisy, as mine often are. You will be able to say hello and interact with the service through the chat feature. Make sure you select panelists and attendees, or everyone, so that we can all see your comments. This will be a particularly useful way to engage when it's time to share our joys and sorrows. We will have a chance to see one another's faces and chat together in our coffee hour after the service. So do be sure to join us there if you'd like a more interactive time together. If this is your first time worshiping with us, I'd like to invite you to fill out a digital visitors card and a link that we'll provide in the chat to let us know a little bit about you and help us um, serve you better and get in touch. And uh, I'd like to tell you that this morning's service is the next in our series on our theological diversity. When we will hear from several of our members about their approaches to a big question. This week's question is, where do you place your trust? And we feel this is a very relevant inquiry in this moment and perhaps a really difficult task for those members who agreed to speak. And so we thank them particularly. Thank you to Isatu Kamara Bush, Jeffrey Richter, and Lisa Kent for sharing your thoughts. Thank you also to our tech host, Holly Daly, and our religious educator, Jamila Batchelder, music director, Jeremy Wagner, and pianist, Hans Harreth. Now I invite you to relax and enjoy our prelude as we settle in together.
Our opening words this morning are by the Reverend Gretchen Haley. There is enough space between us to hold all that you are carrying. All you've been waking, wondering, worrying, or wearing out with confusion or attempts to control, trying to find some sense of normal. All of your irritability, your curiosity, your fragile sobriety, your numb disbelief, your loneliness, your exhaustion, that daily question, allergies or the virus, and your joy, we can hold that too. We can hold all of it here for this time and bless it. Here we will call each other just as we are beloved. Here in this far apart space that is also close in. So much remains uncertain. With each passing breath, the ground is shifting. All we can say for sure is that we are caught in the tangled blessing of life, of grief and gratitude together, like always, except more. With all the forces of life and the spinning of the earth, we are turning and becoming and beginning again, ready for whatever comes next. Let us worship together. And let us begin our, homes. our opening hymn is gathered here. It will be presented in a round and you are welcome to choose the part you'd like and sing along. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, As we now light our chalices, the symbol of our faith in the cup of community that holds us and the inextinguishable flame of the human spirit that sustains us. You may now wish to light a candle at home or look in the chat for a digital chalice. And as we light these chalices, will you please join me in lifting your voices in your home across the city, country, and world to share our weekly words of affirmation. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another. We'll now have a centering moment from our religious educator, Jamila. Good morning. This week I have been working on putting together going away packages for our uh, college freshmen who are departing into the real world. And I wanted to send them with a spiritual practice to take them through those times when it feels like everything is 
spinning out of control and the things that you have placed your trust in no longer feel quite so solid. And so I included this reading that I have turned to again and again in difficult moments by UU Jess Reynolds. On my worst days, it is gravity I am most grateful for. The way the earth pulls at me from her core, yearns for me, keeps me pressed tightly against her surface. When my own core is hollowed out, when I have no more mass than a dead leaf dead on the branch, still this is enough for the earth to find me. She reaches for what little I have and says, stay. Every meditation I have ever done begins by asking me to ground myself. This is not so much an action as it is inaction, surrender, a voluntary abandonment of my own edges and tidy packaging. Sit with me now. Press the soles of your feet back into the ground you sp sprang from. Feel the weight of your body and know that it is glorious. You are born of soil and sun and all the heaviness of the earth is a call to you. The earth is reaching for you. Reach back. Reach back. So for our centering today, I would like us to ground ourselves in gravity and just take a moment to feel that pull of the earth, that one thing we can always, always trust in. Let's take a few more breaths together. And let that feeling of grounding settle into you. And now so grounded remembering how tenderly we are held by the earth, let us hold one another tenderly in heart as we share the joys and sorrows and prayers of our community. I have one joy that was submitted at our website and then I will invite you to share your joys and sorrows in the chat and I will read as many as I can aloud. But first, let us join our heart with joy for Sam Anand's 90th birthday. Sam is a, was a longtime member who has since moved away, but with whom we continue to be in fond touch. Happy birthday to Sam. I now invite your joys and sorrows in the chat or on Facebook. And I will share as many as I can. We join our hearts with 
with the Bonham Hardy family in great joy that the baby is sleeping through the night. What relief we celebrate with you. Jan and Jim announced that their son, Tom Carroll, is engaged to Nancy Rose in St. Louis. Congratulations to the whole family. What joy. We join our hearts with Stacy, who shares deep sorrow. Having learned that her friend Max's sister passed away yesterday after a long battle with cancer, leaving behind two young children. We join our hearts with the Mudricks who share great joy at being with their grandson, Cedar. We join our heart with Jim Shanto, joyful that because of quarantine, he's been able to reconnect with relatives all over the country. We join our hearts with Robin on Facebook, who shares sorrow and fear for Trump's executive order temporarily defunding Medicare and Social Security, his threat to make it permanent, which will harm so many. We join our hearts with Robin also in sharing joy for the simple pleasure of hugging a loved one. Such a simple but profound pleasure, pleasure in this moment. These things and so many other unspoken joys and sorrows and prayers let us hold together Will you join with me in the spirit of prayer or contemplation? Spirit of life, source of love, great mystery. We rest this morning upon your ever-changing, ever-shifting surface. Help us to find ease through every shift and slide, through every movement of the Earth's crust. Help us to find a solid core of love within ourselves to sustain us even as all around us moves and changes. Help us to find peace and connections between us arms that hold us up on tenuous ground. In a world that is very loud, that is so full of difficult decisions and impossible choices, help us to trust the still small voice within to hear the voice of wisdom clearly. Help us be for one another, a source of steadiness and faithfulness, a place where each can land and know we are held Let us be for one another, something we can trust. Amen.
And we're going to now sing together a uh, prayerful hymn response. I know this rose will open. It's another round. Um, and I invite you to join in singing from home on whichever part you choose. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. reading this morning is an excerpt from Nothing Personal by James Baldwin and Richard Abaddon. And this is an excerpt from James Baldwin. For nothing is fixed forever and forever and forever. It is not fixed. The earth is always shifting. The light is always changing. The sea does not cease to grind down rock. Generations do not cease to be born. And we are responsible to them because we are the only witnesses they have. The sea rises, the light fails, lovers cling to each other and children cling to us. The moment we cease to hold each other, the moment we break faith with one another, the sea engulfs us and the light goes out. Here ends the reading. After an interlude from Hans, we will hear three reflections on trust in tenuous times from Isatu Kamara Bush, Jeffrey Richter, and Lisa Kent. Thank you in advance. Let us have our interlude and reflections. Good morning. All that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. Octavia Butler, Parable of the Sower. Trust is a covenant that we make with ourselves, with others, or with the universe. While faith can be lost and belief can be disproven, trust is broken. One party fails in their responsibility to the other, 
That is what makes the concept of trusting in change seem so idiosyncratic. Trust implies consistency and reciprocity. This is what makes Octavia Butler's words so powerful. They suggest that change is, in fact, reciprocal and that it is constant. All that you touch, you change. I trust in the restlessness of the human spirit and the small ways we create change to satisfy an innate need for rebellion. I trust in the ways that so many of us are changing the world for the better simply by being in it. Every day, people all over the world make decisions large and small that serve as acts of rebellion against the status quo. As a stark example, I know as a biracial woman born in the 1980s, my existence was an act of rebellion. Calling a person by their preferred pronoun is an act of rebellion. Challenging a racist or sexist joke by saying, I don't get it, is an act of rebellion that change, creates change. One more person standing on the side of justice is one less person ignoring, excusing, or supporting oppressive systems. Multiply that by dozens, hundreds, thousands, or millions, and we can erode mountains into dust. All that you change, changes you. I trust in the collective evolution of the human spirit. We live in a vastly different world today than we did 20 or 10 or even five years ago. The world I live in today is smarter, more connected, and more compassionate than the one into which I was born. Now, I know it doesn't feel like that at the moment. We witness violence, corruption, disconnection, and unbridled hatred to a degree that feels unprecedented, but it is not. The only thing that has changed is that the majority is finally witnessing and experiencing what the minority has witnessed and experienced for generations. Because so many have allowed themselves to be changed, have allowed their understanding of who is my neighbor to be expanded, more people than ever before are seeing the world through my eyes. I trust the violence and the anger is the extinction burst of a facet of white supremacy and patriarchy. It is the desperation of a desperate system losing its grip. The ugly crescendo of reactionary tactics reaffirms my trust in the change that has incurred, occurred in hearts and minds. The only lasting truth is change. I trust in humanity's drive to do better. Transcendence is a universal human drive, whether it's through religion or innovation or reform. As human beings, we challenge ourselves by asking, what's next? I trust humanity to continue to challenge itself to do better, to be more. I trust that great minds will continue to ponder big questions and that with every victory, someone will look out to the horizon in search of a new quest. The history of humanity bears this out. My son has a book called The History of Buildings. It details the evolution of human habitats from simple structures that protected our ancestors from the elements and provided safety from predators to ornate architectural marvels, to modern innovations in energy efficiency and comfort, whether it's how we build our homes, how we treat our environment, or how we treat each other, there is a constant and ineffable force that propels us to greater knowledge, deeper understanding, and a desire to transcend our worst instincts to be better versions of ourselves. God is change. In my father's culture, no matter whether one is Christian or Muslim or neither, we believe that our ancestors are with us, guiding us, protecting us, interceding with the universe on our behalf. We pour libation to invite them into all of our celebrations, to bless our homes and bless our children. I trust in the ancestors to light our path to a better future. I trust in the foundations they built to fortify us in our current struggles for justice. 
I trust we will fortify future generations. I trust that for as long as humans exist, we will exist in an upward spiral, sometimes doubling back, but never sinking, continuously supported and lifted by those who came before us and holding aloft those who come next. All that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. Thank you. morning. Who do I trust? It seems like such a simple question, but right now I'm not sure I have an answer. Perhaps I'm making it bigger than it really is. Right now there's so much that I long to place my trust in, but I simply cannot. I want to trust my government as we try to stop the spread of coronavirus. I want to trust our leaders, or that our leaders have my safety and interest at heart. I want to trust that law enforcement seeks to protect all citizens and not just some. I want to trust so many things, but time and time again, that trust has been broken. And when it feels like there is no one left to trust, I do not ask, who can I trust? I ask, why do I trust at all? Why do I trust? Again, it's a simple question, but one with a heavy weight attached. Imagine for a second a life with no trust. Imagine waking up in the morning and suddenly not trusting one's own senses. Is the light coming through the window real? Is the blanket one feels actually there providing warmth? How could anyone get out of bed if they didn't trust their own senses? Now imagine if every interaction with people was just as perplexing. A simple greeting, hello, how are you, becomes a possible threat. Is there hidden malice behind the words? The amount of anxiety would be overwhelming. At this basic level, trust is fundamental to our being. In a sense, trust underscores our entire perception of reality. Instead of questioning everything we perceive, we trust that it is real so that we can move through our day. We trust the intentions of those around us so that we can coexist and work together to solve common problems. Every team, group, or institution has at its core a level of trust that binds its constituents together for a common purpose, presumably shared by all involved. This church was formed in trust our government was formed in trust. We trust because we must in so many ways. Without it, we would all go quickly mad, I believe. So if trust is essential to our being, why is it so hard for me to identify who I trust in this current moment? To be fair, there could be easy answers here. I trust that my son loves me. I trust that my money is still good at the store. I trust that my dog will be waiting for me when I get home. There are countless people that I trust in basic ways, and without them, I would not be able to accomplish anything. Those personal connections we share are the foundations for our community, yet they do not explain the massive disconnect I feel to the larger institutions in our country where my trust is gone. If I have so much trust in my personal life, why is it accompanied by so much distrust of society? I think the answer for me is straightforward. For the entirety of my life, America has celebrated the individual. Randy and fantasies of the self-made man have dominated our culture. We glorify the billionaire over the social worker. The young man who gets his own apartment is praised. The young man who lives with his parents, regardless of the reason, is ridiculed. The fiction that one can pull themselves up by their own bootstraps conveniently requires no trust. And so we have built a society where trust is unsurprisingly in short supply. 
I think that we've reached the age or the end of the age of individualism. We cannot stop a pandemic on an individual basis. Viruses simply don't care about our personal desires. We cannot stop global warming individually. The problems of today require collective effort. And so we must revisit the philosophy of America or perish from the earth. Now back to the original question, who do I trust? For all those institutions that I mentioned earlier, I simply don't. But I think that it's critical that we have institutions that are trustworthy. And if those institutions do not exist today, then I think it is our moral imperative that we build those institutions. Trust may be diminished today, but it does not have to be that way tomorrow. Our children will ask ourselves the same questions, and I trust that they will have the answers. Thank you. Good morning. I am honored and quite humbled to be included. In what do I place my trust? This profound existential question is, for an inherently trusting person, difficult to quantify. Before the pandemic, I trusted my alarm to go off, my car to start, and my phone to keep me on task. I trusted there would be money in the bank, food in the fridge, and job security for my partner and myself. From the sturdiness of my home and the safety of my Midwestern burg, I trusted the sun to rise and set on another ordinary day. Though content in my white privileged middle class life, I wasn't blind to the underbelly of society and systemic injustice. I heard the voices of the assaulted and echoed the rumblings of insurgents reeling from the daily onslaught of atrocity. But I always believed, I trusted right would prevail, convinced that good people outnumbered those in the videos posted to my Twitter feed. In this post pandemic reality, I no longer rise at 4 a.m. to teach at the gym. Most days my car sits in the garage the double booked calendar on my phone is wiped clean. Our bank account boasts fewer credits, but my family, unlike many others, has access to most of Maslow's hierarchy. Self-actualization has taken a hit, but I trust we'll navigate the unknown and even embrace opportunities for growth. The real threat is to my trust in all that's holy, to my belief that the arc of the moral universe, even if it is long, will ultimately bend toward justice. It seems to me the arc has flattened and that curve has been replaced by a different kind. The rising COVID deaths and obliterated incomes, mounting police brutality and vitriolic social chaos, stripped resources and the abandonment of the vulnerable and the plunging bottomless corruption of governmental powers poisoning and choking the will of the people. Jaded, my faith is rocked, my trust fractured. <clears throat> I've been brokenhearted before, grieving, shaken off my trusted path, 
but those shock waves only reverberated through my own small biosphere. This pain is collective. We are dizzied by the cacophony of the masses and drowned by the fire hose of unending crisis. Yet, we're still here. The world remains in vibrant perpetuation. The planet continues to turn on its axis. The sun sets on parents everywhere who tuck their children into bed and provide with their very presence, a sentient trust allowing their babies the sleep of the innocent. And in the morning when the sun rises, hope renews itself. Beneath the rubble of my former paradigm, an ember waits to be fanned into flame like a jewel in the lotus. Om Mani Padme Hum. I chant the Buddhist mantra transforming empathy from a concept in the mind to a oneness in the heart. Nelson Mandela, leader of the anti-apartheid movement who endured 27 years of imprisonment said, our human compassion binds us the one to the other not in pity or patronizingly, but as human beings who have learned how to turn our common suffering into hope for the future. In that bond lies the answer, an antidote to disillusionment. Last week, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman wrote, when we come together, we change the world. We are stronger as a woven rope than as unbound threads. It dawns on me that my crisis of faith is a solitary journey, but the audacity of hope begs amalgamation. Barack Obama, speaking at the funeral of John Lewis, reminded us, in our beloved community, we do not walk alone. However isolated I've become, I am connected to the web of all that is. Detachment is simply not possible. When it's quiet, I hear a whisper that says, your ability to trust persists. It has not been snuffed out. Look here, the voice beckons. Look at how your deepest truths hold fast. I peer within and observe the strength of the invisible tether strung between me and my children, no matter where they roam. The devotion of my husband to walk our shared path, no matter what it brings. The self possessions of the bird that split and put her from branch to tree, guided by instinct, protecting their young. The promise of the seasons, each rising to its natural arc before giving way to the next. The exhilaration of crisp mountain air and the wide open view from the summit. The meditation of waves on the shore as they crest and break, crest and break. And the merging of the horizon not the edge of the world, but merely the limit of our vision. The wonder of the night sky, a black expanse of diamond stars, the reverence for my microscopic place in it all, a child of the universe. The resilience of the human heart, the healing salve of touch and the warmth of skin, dissolving layers of anger and hurt. The nurturance of a cocooning embrace and the refuge found in strong arms, the penetration of eyes locking where souls are bared and secrets unkept, the radiance of a smile bestowed and the joy of reciprocation, the song of the wind chimes, signaling ancestors are near, keeping watch. As I knit the broken pieces together, I find my core beliefs have endured that we are inextricably linked, that shouldering another's burdens will lighten our own and accepting an offered hand is not cause for shame, but gratitude. That the alchemy of a singular encounter can spark hope and catch fire. That love, the most powerful force in the universe is the agent of change and change the only constant. As Mother Teresa said, if we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. I remember, I remember to trust what I feel, a thrum in my bones, the cadence of my heartbeat, a familiar yet unnameable quickening at my center. The only way forward is together, seeking the light, becoming the light, 
From my cupped hands, I gingerly place my trust in us, for we are the ones, and there's no more waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. We are the we ones, are the ones. We are to to Jeffrey, to Lisa, for your profound reflections and for the way that they entered into conversation with one another and with our own hearts in each of our homes. Profound reflections for us all to continue in our time. And it is each week with gratitude for one another that we enter into our time of offering. Now is the time in our service when we join in the spiritual practice of generosity, guiding our hearts away from the fear and scarcity all around us and into the trust we find in one another's arms, remembering that we are the ones we have been waiting for to accomplish together what we could not accomplish alone. Remembering that it is by sharing and supporting one another that we feel most human that is why our offering is a spiritual practice each week that we share. And it is also a spiritual practice because we listen to beautiful music while we do it. And so this week's offer, Tori, is um, arranged and produced by the music director at the First Unitarian Society in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, it's a choir and orchestra um, made up of members of that Unitarian congregation, as well as Grace Corral of Brooklyn, First Presbyterian Church of Brooklyn, and Friends of the Director on Instrumental Editions. Um, I hope you enjoy this beautiful offering of one of my favorite hymns, How Can I Keep From Singing? And as you do, we'll share the link uh, in the chat for you to contribute to the shared work of our congregation. Oh, 
Times may be tenuous, but I trust us together to keep singing. Our closing words are from the Reverend Wayne Arneson. Take courage, friends. The way is often hard, the path is never clear, and the stakes are very high. Take courage, for deep down there is another truth. You are not alone. Even now, especially now, you are not alone. We are with you across the distance. Go in blessing, beloved ones, and be a blessing to a world that needs your care. And let us from our homes across Columbia and Missouri and beyond sing our benediction that we share each week. I invite you to join hands with those who are in your home or put your hands over your heart as you are moved as we join in singing led by Jeremy and Hans. Thank you again to Isa Tu and Jeffrey and Lisa for sharing. Thank you to Jamila and Jeremy and Hans. What a beautiful service we've shared together today. I hope that you will join us for conversation in coffee hour. The meeting ID is on the slide. We'll put the link in the comments and we'd love to see your faces and chat. Thank you and we'll see you next week. And I love you. <laughs>